So today we're going to look at drawing a really loose painting or ma making a loose painting of these old dried roses that I've got that have seen better days. So if you have a look, they're just a vase of flowers like this. Old dried up roses. It's funny thing about roses, I actually think that they look nicer when they're dried up than when they're all fresh. Anyway, so to do this painting, which is going to be really, really loose, well, it's really an ink drawing. So what I've got is a bottle of Indian ink. And in here, I've just done a really liquidy mix of a colour that's similar to the rose colour. And I've made it with a bit of ultramarine violet and quinacridone uh, magenta, but any colour would do. And I've got a squirty bottle. I've got a palette knife. And I've got a few different tools here. So what I've got here is a bamboo skewer, and I have sharpened the edge a little, the uh, tip a little bit. I've got these, I think they're tools for carving ceramics. So this one's really sharp, almost like an exacto knife. Um, this one's got another kind of scratchy end, and so are these. I often use these for drawing into paint. They came from a very cheap shop. So if you ever see a set of these ceramic tools, they're well worth picking up. And then I don't even know what this is, but anyway, it's just got like a silver ball on the end. So I'm going to use those. And to get started, all I'm going to do is get my palette knife and this uh, really liquidy paint. And I'm going to just kind of put down some paint where I think the, the blooms might be. And as you can see, I'm not being... Yes, it's, it's, it's nothing accurate here. One there, one up here, another one in the background there. And I might just throw one down here. Looks a bit unbalanced, so I'll maybe put one out here as well. And then I'm going to get my squirty bottle and give them a spritz so that they bleed a little bit. And that way you lose a little bit of the control that you've got. And I might then just dip my paint into this and just drop some more colour any, anywhere, really, in here, just so that it's got a slightly... There's a bit of a variety, a bit of variation in the colour. And I'll do the same with this one. This magenta is almost on its last legs, and I have actually watered it down. So just leave that to dry. You can use a hairdryer if you wish. Okay, I have my uh, roses in front of me, so I'm just going to start to draw with Indian ink. And I'm going to draw really, really loosely. One of the things about using unconventional tools like these is that you can't really control the marks that you're making um, very, very well. So I'm going to start... Um, looking at some leaves that are that are kind of twisting and coming off one of these roses here, and I'll draw these leaves first because they are actually overlapping the vase, so they need to be drawn before anything else. And there's another one that comes sort of a twisty bit here, and another. Kind of out the back here. So now I can put in the vase. Um, and the vase is not important to me, so I'm not going to draw the vase that I see particularly. I'm just going to draw any shape vase. So now I can start drawing in my roses. I'm actually thinking that I'm, I don't really like the thickness of this line for the roses. So I might save this bamboo skewer for the stems. I get quite a lot of ink on here. I'm going to try uh, something different. So let's see what happens if I use this little twisty tool here. It's still 
still quite a thick, a thick line. Well, some parts are anyway. Some of them are quite interesting. It's actually quite nice because this one actually you can you can rotate, and you can get thick lines and and thin lines. It's rather nice. Really edged petal coming there, and I can't I can't really see the uh, inner of this rose here. I can only just see the it's hanging down, but it does have some I don't know what you call these things. Flower holders in a way. Right, so that's that rose now. The rose that I can see here, I can actually see that it's got a bit of a, a, a more of a centre. I'm going to draw it more rose shaped. And there's a rose down here that's hanging down. Again, I can't really see into this rose because it's drooping. Kind of frilly petals. One that comes in here, like this. Another one that kind of is poking out the back. Put in here. And it comes fairly flat across here. Again, I can see these we. Um, I've got a botanical name, but I'm going to call them the flower holder, flower holders, and it will have a thicker stem, which I'll put in later. Right, this one over here has got quite a lot of these petal holders. It's got this sort of more of a bowl shape, tulip shape almost to the rose. I'm going to swap. Maybe I'll just see what, what happens with this pen, with this nib. And this one's a much finer. Right, got a funny little one here. It's petal holes coming up here and down here. Another one out here. And the rose is actually more to the side. Sort of a trumpet in the middle. Here. And then a petal. A little bit of dark in there. This one, this um, nib, I have to actually dip in a lot more frequently. This one is another sort of droopy, droopy rose. So it's coming in the opposite direction than what you would expect it to, because it's it's bowing over. And so is this one, another very droopy, bowing over rose. And now I need to be looking at some, putting some stems, but also some leaves. I can get some nice detail on the leaves with this one. Now, this stem, let me go back to my. Bamboo skewer while I work out this stem belongs to this flower. This stem this one is down here.
I mean, you don't have to be particularly accurate with these, but it's sort of you, you do want your, your drawing to make sense. So this one actually curves over the back of this and comes down here. And this one comes out behind the sleeve and it comes over. Picking that this up a little bit. I can do some pattern on this glass. Now, the other thing that this vase of flowers has is gypsophila. And most of the flowers have gypsophila at the ends, so they have quite thin stalks, and then they start to branch out into the parts where you'll find the um, little... little white flowers. There is one kind of hanging down here. There's quite a lot of leaves actually just in amongst all these uh, flowers in the in the lower section here. I'll try and get some of them in just to make it a little bit more interesting, I think. We've got Chipsopla there and there's a little bit out here, so there must be a a stem that comes up this way. Okay, I think that will do for that. I really should start over this side. Let's see what kind of dot I get with these. Can I try this ball thing? See if I can get a better dot. Otherwise it's going to take too long. That's better. And what happens if I turn it sideways? Not much. I guess you could you could use a, a cotton wool bud for these. I think you call them Q tips in America. I like a bit of a bigger a bigger dot. So I have to be a bit more generous with my ink. See here they're all quite uniform in size and you want to kind of avoid that if you can, try and just do some variety. I'm remembering to work from left to right just because I'm right-handed and I am, if I started doing my dots over here I'm very likely to smudge them. You can pick up some ink from some of the other ink spots as well. If anyone knows what these are, let me know. 
I saw them on Amazon and I bought them because I thought they might be useful for making dots. And they're not bad. Right. I think I'm going to just leave that for the moment. I come back in with a paintbrush and just do a bit of shadow. I've wet my brush and I'm just going to take some of the uh, the ink off this circle. A little bit of pink on this, which I actually quite like. This needs to be darker in here. So I'm going to put almost like I can see the back edge of this vase and it's dark in here. I like that better. The leaves, I think, would just do with a little bit of colour. But I don't want too much. So I am diluting it quite a lot. I'm wanting it to be grey and not pink. Although I've got pink on here. Again, I've got to be careful not to have it too dark. And not to do every bit of the leaf. Maybe just like the underside. Maybe some of this. And I could put a bit of shadow there. And I could extend the shadow. So I've got a light source coming from here. The, the blooms, the shadow of the blooms. And one last line, I think. I feel like it needs to have yeah, a table mark. I feel like this line here could be a little darker. And then if you wanted, you put some darks and lights in your flowers, you could do that as well. But you might be better off to do them. I was using grey, but it may be better off to do them in the colour. So just like taking a little bit of the purple like that. Maybe just dropping some just because it's a bit darker, so where you think the, the flower would be dark. Add some in. Remember the light's coming from this way. Might be dark underneath and on this side. This one might be dark in here. Anyway, I'm happy with that. So remember, just spritz a bit of colour where you think your blooms will be. They don't have to be roses, they can be any blooms you like. And find yourself some interesting things to draw with. So just a little bit of colour, a little bit of uh, Indian ink and you're good to go.